Hey there students, Mr. Olson here. How's it going guys? Sorry to get this video up a little bit late. It's from April 20th and 21st. Um, we've got a simple, uh, very simple um, intro on this, so uh, yeah, give that a shot. And then from there we will, uh... oh yeah, I just want to go over problem number two with you guys. This is feeling like deja vu, it's like I've already made this video somehow. Okay, hang on. I don't think I have, what's the lesson on today? Yeah, I haven't made the video yet, great. So I'll try this out, pause the video, and we're back. I'll go over problem two with you guys. There is a common mistake in there I thought was interesting. Add 3x to both sides, gives us 5 equals 4x minus 7. And from there, I bet you can tell the rest of that. I had a lot of kids that did x plus 3x and got 3x. But remember that the x by itself was like a 1x, 1x plus 3x equals 4x. Today's objective, we can find the volume of cylinders, cones, and spheres. This here is a cylinder. We'll be focusing most on cylinders today, and then uh, next lesson, we'll be going over the cones and spheres in a bit more detail. I'll give you the, vol the formulas for each of those volumes, but yeah, cylinders are the biggest focus. But before we get too far into cylinders, we need to talk about circles first. So here's a circle. Circles have several measurements that we use. We have the radius. Radius is halfway across the circle, starting from the center. Diameter is going all the way across the circle through the center. Circumference goes all the way around the circle like this. Yay, that's the best circumference I've ever drawn. Um, circumference. The diameter is equal to two times the radius, makes sense, right? Or radius equals half of diameter. Most of what we're gonna be doing with circles, it's the radius that we'll be using. So to give the diameter, divide it in half to get the radius. Circumference is equal to pi times the diameter, or you could also say it's equal to two times pi times the radius, two pi r. Um, that's circumference. That's actually how they come up with the number pi originally, is pi is equal to the circumference of a circle divided by the diameter of a circle. If you measure it perfectly, then you get pi to all of its amazing digits. Um, infinitely many digits, irrational number goes on forever and ever without ending. Fantastic. Um, area of a circle is the key thing we need to know. Area is equal to pi times the radius squared. So if this circle has a radius of, say, uh, 3, Find what the uh, circumference, find what the area of that is. Pause the video, and we're back. So area is equal to pi times three squared. Three squared, that's nine, so let's say that's nine pi. Now if this was units, let's say centimeters, that is nine pi square centimeters. If they ask for an exact answer, this is the exact answer. Pi is an irrational number, no matter how many, no matter how many digits of it you use, if your calculator may have a pi button, it'll use at most like 15, maybe 20 digits of pi. No matter how many digits you use, it is not exact, as exact as this is. Now, if we actually need a number that we can measure, that we can use, we may want to actually multiply it out. Quite often in books, they might use something like, might say something like use 3.14 for pi. So that would mean we'd have area is equal to nine times 3.14, or approximately, this is used just for the sake of having the same answer. So there's no rounding issues, no other issues like that. We're just gonna make sure that we all have the exact same answer, nine times 3.14. Uh, that ends up being 28.26, I believe. Yeah, 28.26 square centimeters. And you might also sometimes be asked to just round it when you use pi. So on most calculators these days, they have a pi key of some sort. So you can do 9 times pi, and you get something like uh, 28.27 square centimeters. This is one of the more common mistakes I'd get from friends when they had questions about math. They would say, hey, I did my assignment online, and I checked with everybody in my group, everyone in my class I could talk to, we all got the same answer, but it says it's wrong. And they would claim that, of course, the computer system wasn't working or whatever. No, here's what would be wrong, and I I'd always ask what sort of question was it, they said anything about circles, anything that has anything to do with circles, I would ask, what did you use for pi? And they'd say, well, my, butt, my calculator has a pi button. And I'm like, what does it say on the assignment to use for pi? Well, it says to use 3.14, but it doesn't make it different. I'm like, yes, it does. 
even as few as 9 pi is enough that we get a difference of 100. In other words, if your online homework asked you to use 3.14 for pi and you used the pi button, it would, get you this, it would give you this wrong. Follow the instructions you are given. If it says to use the, uh, if it says to use the approximation 3.14 for pi, then you use the approximation 3.14 for pi. Okay, sorry to get on a soapbox there, but that is one that I've seen so many mistakes from. If it says use the exact answer, you're using 9 pi, that is a perfectly fine answer. It's a perfectly cromulent answer, okay? No reason to change that. Um, this is actually my favorite answer. I think it's a very crisp, very good answer. Okay, now we're back to a cylinder. A cylinder is basically... Oh boy, now I jump over to rectangles. A cil okay, rectangles. <laughs> so it might seem like it's going all over the place, but I promise I'm going somewhere with it. A rectangle, one way to think of a rectangle is that it is a base and a height. In fact, two bases that are connected together. Base here, base there, everything in between is the rectangle. Because that it gives you the area formula, base times height. Almost every area formula out there is some variation on base times height. In fact, even the area of a circle, if you divide it up correctly, it turns into a rectangle and the rectangle base times height. Always base times height. Um, for a cylinder, it's like a 3D rectangle. We have two bases that are separated, and then the distance between them, that's the height. Um, prisms are the same way. They have like two squares separated with a height between them, or two triangles with a height between them. Um, all sorts of shapes are base times height. To find the volume, of any shape that's made by having two bases with a height between them, you do the area of the base times the height. Notice I put that in parentheses, that's just to show this is all one thing, area of base times height. And we just said the area of a circle is pi r squared. And that gives us this uh, convenient formula, pi r squared times height. Volume of a cylinder, pi r squared times height, Know that, memorize it. It's something we need for the end of the little test. So it's just useful to know. Um, <laughs> area of base times height. Uh, it's something you used to win a competition, for instance. Uh, when I was in my first year teaching at the book fair, I won this uh, fantastic jar of jelly beans. It's less fantastic than it used to be. It's kind of eroded over time. Uh, erosion, it's a thing. Um, <laughs> But, uh, yeah, prize that I won, and how did I win that? Area of the base times by the height. I counted, I counted how many jelly beans on the bottom layer here, multiplied it by how many layers there would be, area of base times height. It works. That particular jar has 4,316 in it. I guessed 4,321 based off of the uh, number that I, based off of my area of base times height. Um, yeah, so pretty cool stuff. Best I've ever done one of those before. I have gotten exactly with a much smaller amount, but I'm much more happy with this one where it was a, t a ton more, and they got it not quite exact, but close. Anyway, area based on size. Let's put some actual numbers to these, all right? Let's say that our radius, oh yeah, so pi r squared times height. Let's say our radius is, um, six... No, five centimeters, and our height is six centimeters. See if you can find the volume of that cylinder. Pause the video, and we are back. Trickiest part is setting up the formula correctly. Volume equals pi times, what's our radius? Five, five squared, times what's our height? Six. Pi, five squared, times six. If you got that far, then you were doing really good. Depending on the situation, you can just type that right into the calculator. You may need to type in a 3.14 for pi, so 3.14 times 5 squared times 6, that works. Or it may be easier to actually just multiply this out. 5 squared, 25, times 6, times pi. Usually we put the pi at the end once we know all the numbers. 25 times 6, 150, pi. We are measuring centimeters, so since it's volume, cubic centimeters. Three-dimensional space, cubic centimeters. So 150 pi cubic centimeters. So that's our uh, first answer. If you didn't get that far yet, uh, you can still get on here. Uh, do 150 times 3.14. Find what the approximation would be for this using 3.14. And that is 471 cubic centimeters. 
Despite the fact that it's written centimeters cubed, we still say cubic centimeters. If I use the pi key here, 150 times pi, I get 471.238998. Yeah. Off by just a little bit, a uh, quarter of a cubic centimeter. That's not very much at all, all right? This approximation is good up to a certain point. Uh, two decimal places of pi, you know, that gets you off by maybe, um, I don't know, like a quarter of a percent, half a percent, less than that, like a tenth of a percent maybe. You're not going to be off by too much uh, if you, um, yeah. Let's see, according to my calculator here, it's about 0.03% that you'd be off by. If we're building a rocket, that's a pretty big deal. This versus that. So that might mess up a rocket entirely and it explodes in flight. That'd be sad. But if we're building a birdhouse, then we're probably good with this approximation, you know? Um, if we're building a birdhouse that's part of a rocket, then I don't know. Anyway, try finding the volumes of these two here. Pause the video. And we're back. So problem number three, we start from our volume formula, volume equals pi r squared times height. We put in our numbers, volume is equal to pi times 6 squared times 10, and then that's pi times 36 times 10. 36 times 10 is 360 pi cubic centimeters. And then if we use 3.14 for pi, that gives us 1130.4. Um, cubic centimeters, and if we use the pi key on the calculator to get a slightly better approximation, again, that's the key thing. This is exact. Everything after that is not. Even if you use the pi key, it's still not exact. 1,130.97. Only off by half a cubic centimeter. Not very much. Problem number four. So volume here. Uh, that's going to be pi times 4 squared times 3. Writing out this formula each time will help it to stay in your mind better so you can use that better. That's why I try to write that down each time. I used to have the darndest time remembering the formula for the volume of a sphere until I started writing it down each time and then I got better at that, you know? So this is our teaching I've gotten better at that because, yeah, I have to keep repeating it. So 4 squared, that's 16 times 3 pi squared cubic inches. 16 times 3, that's 48 pi cubic inches. If you want, you can add the cubic inches at the very beginning once you start writing it down. It's not a bad idea. Okay, if we use the approximation 3.14, we get 150.72 cubic inches. And if we use the actual pi number, or pi button on the calculator, 48 pi, 150.7 or actually 0.8 cubic inches, rounding it. Okay, cones. Volume of a cone, think of it like a triangle. Triangle is base times height divided by two, that's because it's two-dimensional. Cones are three-dimensional, so it's area of the base, pi r squared, times the height. So this is three-dimensional, we divide by three. Write that down, know that. Uh, you'll be using it uh, in the next video, or if you were here in class, then you already used it. Anyway. Let's actually do this on a problem. Let's say that this uh, is 6 and the height is, I don't know, 5. So, oh, uh, let's go with feet and also feet. Really complicated if you switch units. See if you can find this. Pause the video and we're back. So this would be pi 6 squared times 5 divided by 3. 6 squared is 36 times 5 times pi divided by 3. 36 times 5 is 180, divided by 3 is 60, so 60 pi cubic feet. I promise that's what I was writing to begin with. And then if we do the approximation, 60 times 3.14, 188.4 cubic feet. If we use the uh, pi approximation, um, then we get... Uh, Pi button on the calculator, my calculator anyways, 188.5. So that's a cone. And last one is a sphere. Sphere only has one significant uh, measure, and that is the radius. Let's say the radius here is 3 miles. Why not? 
Volume of a sphere is pi times the radius cubed times 4 thirds. 4 thirds pi r cubed. So there's only one uh, measure there. We have to cube it in order to get everything else. 4 thirds pi r cubed. Yeah. Um, so in this case, we have 4 thirds pi times 3 cubed. 3 cubed would be 27 times 4 thirds times pi. Oh, cubic miles. 27 times 4 thirds, that's 36 pi cubic miles. Which I think, maybe you ought, you ought to do one that had 36 pi in it, I can't remember. It's a number that I tend to come up with very often in these. 113.4, oh, we had a 360 pi. 0 0.04 cubic miles when you use 3.14. That's an approximation. That is a terrible 3. Let's try that again. There we go, much better ish. Exactly this, approximately that, or using the uh, pi key on the calculator, 113.097 cubic miles. And that is it for uh, spheres. Uh, if you didn't quite get this as well as you'd like, I'll have another video that goes over some of these more in depth. See you later. Bye.